Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to deal with special provisions relating to layoff, retrenchment, closure under Industrial Disputes Act 1947, which was enacted in 11 March 1947. Chapter B deals with special provisions relating to layoff, retrenchment, and closure. First of all, we're going to read special provisions relating to layoff. But the definition of layoff is provided under Chapter 1, Preliminary, Section 2, Triple K. The definition is layoff means the failure, refusal, or inability. Here it is merely failure, refusal, or inability of the employer to employ to give employment to the workmen. The employer cannot give employment to the workmen or he fails to, refuse to, or unable to do so on account of certain reasons which are not his control or beyond his control. These reasons are these reasons are on account of shortage of coal. This is coal, power or raw material materials or the accumulation of stocks or the breakdown of machinery or natural calamity or for any other connected reasons to give employment to the workmen these reasons are meta, um, maybe material breakdown material background or natural calamities which is not con neither the control of the employer nor the employee due to those reasons shortest of those powers the employer fails to refuses to or unable to give employment to the employee this is what layoff means sometimes in case of layoff the employer is entitled to employee sorry in case of layoff the employee is entitled to salary but lockout is different from layoff for the special provision we have to read section 24 m as regards to layoff this word prohibition is used here so there are certain conditions for the purpose of layoff that is now the first and foremost condition is prior permission of the appropriate government or specified authority we can say it appropriate government or specified authority here we can say no workmen other than a bandi bandi badly workmen or a casual workers these two kind of workmen are excluded in this they these two kinds the uh, prior permission of the central government is needed is not needed not needed but in every case no workman whose name is born on the master rolls of an industrial establishment to which this sector supply applies shall be laid off by his employer except with the prior permission of the appropriate government Prior permission of the appropriate government or trust authority as may be specified by the government. Appropriate government may be central government or the state government. Specified by the government means appropriate government by notification in the official gazette. Thereafter, if there in after, hereafter in this section referred to as the special authority. Obtained on an application made in behalf. So, they have to make an application to the appropriate government or specified authority and the um, appropriate government or special specified authority shall give them permission prior permission prior permission so unless such layoff is due to shortage of power or to natural calamity and, the, and in the case of mine just layoff is due to also to fire food excess of inflammable gas or explosion now this section contains many parts unless unless mean in the cases the layoff is due to shortage of power, natural calamity, and in the case of mine, just layoff is also due to fire, flood, excess of information, gas, or explosion. In those cases, prior permission is not needed because this is the time of emergency where prior permission may not be possible. But in all other cases, in, uh, in the case of all workmen, except Bundy workmen and casual workers, the prior permission of the central or uh, appropriate authority, that may be central government or state government, and specified authorities required. And for this purpose, they have to send an application to the concerned authority. Then this is subsection 2 of section 25M. 
an application for permission under subsection 1 shall be made by the employer in the prescribed manner so application must be made in prescribed manner stating clearly the reasons for the intended layoff the reasons uh, cannot shall not be those reasons specified here because these reasons in those cases prior permission is not needed but in all other cases the reason have to be mentioned for the intended layoff and a copy of just application shall be served simultaneously to the workman the workman also deserve a copy of just um, application concerned in the prescribed manner now basically what subsection 2 says is that the application must be made in prescribed manner it must state the reason of the intended layoff and the copy of such application must be served to the workman as well then subsection 3 provides that where the workman other than ba ba badly workmen or casual workers these are of course excluded of an industrial establishment being a mine have been laid off under subsection 1 for reasons of fire flood or excess of inflammation gas or explosion the employer in relation to such establishment shall within a period of 30 days from the date of commencement commencement of layoff apply in the prescribed manner to the appropriate government or the specified authorities for permission to continue the layoff so section uh, subsection 3 basically deal with in the case when they want to continue the layoff so for this purpose 30 days permission is needed application for the uh, within a period of 30 days within a period of 30 days from the date of commencement of such layoff apply in the prescribed manner again to the appropriate authority for the purpose of continuation of such layoff so subsection 3 deal with deals with continuation permission to continue layoff then comes subsection 4 where an application for permission under subsection 1 and subsection 3 has been made in case of subsection 1 this is prior permission in case of subsection 3 continuation of layoff has been made the appropriate government or the special fight authority after making such inquiry so it is the appropriate government or the specialized authority should make an inquiry as it thinks fit and after giving a reasonable opportunity of being here to the employer and workman the reasonable opportunity of the first step is to make an inquiry second step is reasonable opportunity of being here to both the employer and the workman concerned and persons interested in just layoff and any other person who is interested in just layoff, layoff they must be given a reasonable opportunity of being cured having regard to the genuineness and adequacy of the reasons and the third step is they must have regard to the genuineness and adequacy of whether it is genuine or, uh, genuine or not and adequacy of the layoff, such reasons for such layoff the interest of the workman and all other relevant factors by order and for reasons to be recorded in writing either grant or refuse they have the power either to grant or to refuse to grant such permission and a copy of such uh, order shall be communicated to, communicated to the employer and the workman so this is very simple after an application the first step to make an application it may be made under subsection 1 and subsection 2 in case of subsection 1 it is prior permission in case of subsection 2 this is continuation and continuation um, okay and the appropriate government so after this application here so we have appropriate government or specified authority. What they will do? First of all, they will make an inquiry. They will make an inquiry. After they, they after this, they will give reasonable reasonable opportunity of being sure to the board, employer, workman, and any other person interested thereof. Employer workmen and any other person interested there of reasonable opportunity of being here after this they will check the genuineness and adequacy of reason and after that they will decide whether to grant whether to grant or to refuse whether to grant or to refuse such permission and whatever decision did well whatever decision it may be they will send a copy to the concerned copy to the both workmen and the employer so this is a procedure then comes subsection 5 where an application for permission under uh, subsection 1 and subsection 3 has been made and the appropriate government or the specified authority does not communicate the order granting or refusing to grant permission to the employer within a period of 60 days the time period in here is 60 days from the date of such application is made the permission applied for shall, shall be deemed to have been granted on the expiration of the period of 60 days but in case if the uh, uh, if the appropriate government or the specified authority do not communicate their order Order. order may be either to grant or to refuse and after the expiration of the six expiration of the 60 days even they do not what they do not 
communicate their order then it shall be deemed deemed is what it shall be presumed means presumed to have granted the permission then comes uh, subsection 3 uh, sorry subsection 6 an order of the appropriate government or the specified authority granting or refusing to grant permission shall subject to the provision of subsection 7 this is what subsection 7 be final and binding on all the parties concerned and shall remain in force for one year from the date of such order so the time for remain in force final binding and shall remain in force for one year but subject to subsection 7 what is provided in subsection 7 the appropriate government or the specified authority may either on its own motion that means by itself or on the application made by either by the employer or the workman the workman or the employer both can make application review its order granting or refusing to grant review is order granting or refusing to get permission under subsection 4 or refer the matter or rest a case may be or uh, cause it to be referred to tribunal for adjudication this provision is also the additional provision provided that very reference has been made to tribunal subsection 9 provides that notwithstanding anything contained in the foregoing provisions in this section the appropriate government may, if it is satisfied, that owing to such exceptional circumstances as accident, it may be either accident or establishment, or uh, in accident in establishment or that of the employ employer or the like, it is necessary to do so by order direct that the provisions of subsection 1, as the case may be, subsection 2 shall not apply in relations to such establishment for such period as may be specified in the order. So, what was provided in subsection 1, apply prior permission, subsection 3, continuation. Prior permission in case of continuation of layoff. Then, in some exceptional circumstances, this prior permission is not needed. We have already found uh, some of the other exceptions in subsection, uh, subsection 1 as well. But here, subsection 9 provides that in case of any accident in the establishment or death in the death of the employer. In those cases, these are also some emergency cases where the prior permission may not be possible to obtain. That's why it is not required as provided under subsection 9 of the said section. Then subsection 10 provides that the provisions of section 25C other than the second provision thereto shall apply to cases of layoff referred to in this section. Then comes explanations to the section. For the purpose of this section, a workman shall not be deemed to be laid off by an employer if such employer offers an alternative employment. So, alternative in case of alternative employment, for example, if the employer offers an alternative employment to the employer, which in the opinion of the employer does not call for any special skill or previous experience and can be done by the workman in the same establishment, and the establishment is also the same establishment from which he has been laid off, or in any other establishment belonging to the same employer, or it may be the same establishment or any other establishment but the establishment must belong to the same employer and another the first requirement is that the employer provides offers alternative employment second requirement is that in the same establishment third may, may not be the same establishment but by the same employer situation situated in the same town or village or situated within just distance from the establishment to which he belongs that the transfer will not involve undue hardship to the workmen and the situation is also just that um, it will not cause any kind of undue hardship to the workmen having regard to the facts and circumstances of his case provided that the wages which will normally have been paid normative employment now in those cases it shall not be deemed to be laid off how because number one the work the employer provides alternative employment second this employment do not require uh, in the opinion of the employer which do not require any special skills or previous experiences third it is in the same establishment fourth even if it is in a different establishment but by the same employer fifth it will not cause or involve any undue hardship to the workmen having regard to the facts and circumstances of the case and fifth that the wages which will normally have been paid to the workmen are offered for the alternative employment in those cases in this fifth five, uh, five points it shall not be amount to uh, laid off. This is provided under explanation to this section which we are reading. Section 25 M. Prohibition of layoff. A special provision relating to layoff. So after it we have to read a case law which relates to the constitutional validity of section 25 M. Now here apart from constitutional validity we, we will find After this, we are going to read one case law that is constitutional validity of section 25A M relating to special provisions of layoff. So, this this uh, case 
Papnasam Labor Union versus Madhura Coal Cell Titi. Here we will find the object of this section 25 m as well. And another and another constitution 